Hello friends, welcome to my latest blog about automating supply chain tasks which no human assistant dare to tackle. In the very first video, I have covered how to download and use LLMA2 models and model weights on Ubuntu machine. Second video, I covered related installation documentation about how to do the same thing in a Windows environment. I've also shown a use case about using large language models to monitor employee times and expenses in our organization. In next video, I covered Rather an interesting use case I've been working on using large language models as an OCR and Vision AI for documents. In this video today, we are going to put it all together and showcase another very specific but very useful use case. We will see how to automate supply chain daily routine tasks which are very tedious, boring and require extensive manual hours. I also want to mention that please see that this video is not about coding and rather is just a high level design review session to discuss approaches to handle supply chain tasks. Now some of these examples use cases include how to handle three way matching process like matching purchase order to invoices and receipt before approving payments and how to locate duplicate invoices when you are working with millions and millions of documents. Now I want to call out that all the links are included in the video description below. Like I said, this video is not about coding. Let's discuss some high level design. This is a typical supply chain data flow diagram. Most of the time a customer make purchases or give orders which include products, which obviously belong to some category. So product category is product catalog and product has all the product information like description and prices. Similarly, this is another process flow diagram from sourcing process perspective and we are going to discuss all this in later today. So for now, let's assume, you know, you have a table so in this invoice table, you have a purchase order. And so for any given date, a, process, a purchase order was generated and it has all the information like customer ID, vendor ID, and how many quantities of product were ordered. So similarly, we have another table called receipt. So for the purchase order which have been generated, you keep a track of receipt. So for example, if a product has been received in the warehouse or not. So this another sample table we will be working with in later part of the video today. Similarly, you will find tons of code like this in notebook which generates supply chain data. The whole point of doing this is that we want to learn and derive generic behavior from these millions and millions of rows and use this information in our language, in our language models. So for example, given a product is shipped from a vendor which has a 97% probability of receiving on time and invoices were always clean, there was no anomalies point. So that means it's a good vendor. Now similarly, so using this behavior, we want to locate bad examples in our data and we pass that information to large language models and filter them to stop payments. So that's the whole point of doing this exercise and you know, um, the whole point of doing this three-way match process here. Similarly, I want to state another example. A lot of time what happens, a vendor charges you, suppose you are receiving millions and millions of invoices. A lot of time what happens, a vendor charges you, it could be a mistake, duplicate invoices. So it's often a pain to figure it out that whether a receipt or invoice or expense receipt has been a duplicate of another or not. So we are going to discuss the approaches, how to identify the duplicate invoices received in your system. All right, so that's what we are going to cover in this very specific use case today. So if you are not interested in supply chain, I want to warn you, please feel free to skip this video. All right, so now if you're still watching this, I assume that you have interest in supply chain automation. So let me introduce myself. My name is Amit Shukla and I train neural network on finance and supply chain data. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. All right, so we are going to talk about uh, installation, which we have already covered in previous video. So let's talk about the say, typical supply chain business process. If you work for some very large organizations, you might be familiar with these terms. These are the business processes, very high level business process. And depending on your organization, there could be dozens or more with such business processes. So this is a typical diagram of your supply chain and you can have a lot of different tables, but they're very high level, less, you know, uh, let's assume that you have a customer, address, order, product category and product, and also order and invoices also. Uh, let's say product categories, your product catalog and products has all the product information like description, prices and uh, whether this was in contract or not. And order similarly has the detail of the customer and their, and their associated product orders. So similarly on the back end, there's a business process flow. So typically what you do um, when from the organization perspective, when you make this kind of purchases, you buy the goods from your manufacturers and you buy those in like, you know, really in bulk quantity. And uh, you know, so whenever you issue a a purchase order you issue to a vendor and upon successful receipt of the product you also get charged through an invoice and a typical three-way match process is that you match what was ordered what was an invoice and what has been received 
and everything matches then you pay to the vendor all right let's do a detailed code walkthrough here i have already covered a snippet of this python code in my previous video so here i'm using these libraries so for example faker polars and you know a couple of other python libraries to generate this data so as you can see uh, first let's load some uh, data that data what we have discussed like customer vendor product and product category again you will find details of this code in the video description below this is very very easy code i'm not going to walk through this again i have in my last video i have covered this in extensive detail how to generate this kind of uh, this kind of fake data so for example here i'm generating a customer data frame as you can see there is a customer id name phone number address email id uh, and you can be very creative please use this script to generate as many lines of uh, your records as you want to be so here in this so let's go do the shape as you can see i have 1000 records for uh, associated to this one uh, to uh, you know 1000 different customers so similarly uh, let's create another data frame so here let's say vendor so vendor could be the same thing i'm using a vendor id name phone number address and email id so again, similarly, let's create 1000 different vendors here. Similarly, I'm going to create product. And here, you know, uh, I'm using another script which creates 1000 different products here. And again, I'm just initiating them, giving them a price. Now let's go create a purchase order. So what is a purchase order? Purchase order actually is consists of all those things what we just discussed. Purchase order. So for example, on a given date, this particular customer buys this, this particular vendor's product and in this much quantity. So that's what you're seeing in this um, purchase order data frame here. Here the only difference is as you can see, I've generated 100,000 different lines and you can be creative. I personally on this uh, particular you know uh, instance, I played with the 10 millions or maybe 100 million rows here. All right, so for this case, I'm just going to work on the 100,000 rows here. So as you can see, there are 100,000 different purchase order I have created. Now let's go create 100,000 invoices for those 100,000 purchase order what we just created. Please feel free to use, you know, you can play with the sample size here and you can manipulate the data and generate as much data as fits into your computer memory. All right, so here you are looking at the 100,000 different invoices generated for those particular um, purchase order. So as you can see, I have created some data so where it doesn't match intentionally. So I want to create some bad invoices uh, just to, you know, so that I can locate those bad invoices and, you know, I can uh, use those large language models to figure it out. What are the bad invoices versus what are the good invoices? Similarly, receipt status. So you can see like, you know, not, um, so for example, I have 100,000 different purchase order. Not all of them have been received. So this is again fake data I have created. And as you can see, there is a extra fields uh, on top of those purchase order. Now, then once you have, imagine you have all this data coming from your organizations, then you want to define, you want to, you know, derive a generic behavior. By this product, what are the chances that, what are the average quantity ordered? What are the average price I have paid for this product over the period of the time? So once you have built this kind of general statistics, you can use this statistical, statistical information, pass it to your large language models through prompts, and then you can derive the conclusion that, okay, this on this product, if I get it from this vendor, what are the probability that this vendor always pays me on the time? So the whole point of showing this, you know, these data sets and this building prompts and these things to you, that we want to, you know, use the make use of large language models, um, and we are just passing the statistical information to those LLMs. Plus, please remember, more more statistical information, just like to human brain. So, for example, if you make a decision, more statistical accurate information you have, more facts you have, you are going to, you know, make better decision. So, that's exactly what I'm doing using the LLMs of here, right? So, now, then you take one bad invoice and you take that particular invoice, you pass that data to the LLM and saying, hey, my generic behavior was Overall, for that product from that vendor, it has been always good. So for this particular instance, this uh, for this product, that vendor is charging me this such amount. Is it okay to pay that or not? So again, I have uh, you know uh, I have included some sample code here where you can call the Chat GPT or you can call the Meta LLMA models here. Now again, I'm not going to go through the details of this code. Uh, please visit this links. I'm going to include this link to this video description below. 
So likewise for the next section, duplicate devices, I have, uh, these are the steps we have followed. Again, you are going to find, I'm going to include the link to this notebook here, uh, and you will find code how to, you know, what is the approaches to locate the duplicate devices. I'm not going to cover everything in this video today because these are just the samples, and I can understand like, you know, it could be quite cumbersome to cover these kind of details. But you will find all the source code and everything included in the video description. So again, this is a very specific use course. I realize it's not applicable to everyone. Uh, it's only for the supply chain people uh, who understand like you know who want to automate the supply chain or, uh, supply chain business process all right so uh, please go through this you know code and if you have any issues please feel free to open an issue at my github repository and i'll be happy to help you out thank you for watching